Hi there, my name is Nitz Karlabidis, I'm a mathematics teacher, and in this short video, we will discuss about the inverse function. And actually, since this video is dedicated on the IB's application and the petition SL subject, we will have a first introduction to the concept of an inverse function, and we will kind of have an informal idea of what an inverse function is. So let's begin. Let's assume that we have a function f from a to b. This means, as you see below in your first diagram, that we have a function that takes values from set a and relates them with a unique way, since it is a function, to values of set b. Some of these values are shown. For instance, 1 is related to 5, 2 is related to 10, and 4 is related to 9, respectively. Now, the main question is as follows. Could there be another function, and keep that word, it should be a function, could there be another function that undoes the effect of f? And what do I mean by un undoing? I mean that could there be a function that relates the same values of b to the corresponding values of a, but this time the values start from set b. For instance, could we have a function that takes 5 and relates it to 1, takes 10 and relates it to 2, takes 9 and relates it to 4? Well, the answer on this question is not always. But if there is such a function, this is what we call inverse function of initial function f, and we symbolize that by f minus 1. I said not always, but why is that? If f minus 1 exists, if the inverse function of f exists, it also has to be a function. And this is not always possible. Let's see a counterexample. On the top diagram, we have a function that takes 1 and relates it to 3, takes 2 and relates it also to 3, and takes 5 and relates it to 8. Let us assume that this is indeed a function, and it is, based on the function's definition. The opposite way now would have been taking 3 and relating it to 1, but at the same time taking 3 and relating it to 2. And this is not a function by a function's definition, because remember that a function between two sets has to take points from set A and relate them in a unique way to points to numbers of set B. Here we see that although the top one suggests a function, we can have two input values being related to one unique output value, but we cannot have the opposite. So the opposite direction in this case would not have been a function. And therefore, we would say that, no, this is not inversible. So, OK, we have established that. We know that if a function that, that undoes f exists, then this is called an inverse function. We don't always, we cannot always find an inverse function. Is there a condition which, if met, then enables a function to have an inverse? Yes. The condition that should be met is that the original function f must be a one-to-one -one function. This means that its output value should correspond to exactly one input value. But this is often tricky. This is obviously not meant for AI SL. We could remember, however, instead of that, the horizontal line test. But in order to, to be able to apply that, we definitely need to know the graph of F. Let's see what the horizontal line test suggests. Given a graph, the red one here, if all horizontal lines drawn, the blue ones, Cut the graph of f at most at one point. Again, if all horizontal lines 
cut the graph at most at one point, then indeed that graph, that function is inversible. There is an inverse function. On the contrary, however, if there is even one horizontal line that cuts the graph at more than one point, then it cannot have an inverse. Before ending this video, let us remember two things. Although finding the inverse on our own is not included in our syllabus, apart from understanding the main concept we just saw, we need to know the following. The main property of an inverse function is that if f of a is equal to b, then f minus 1 of b is equal to a. For example, let f of x equals to x plus 5. Find f minus 1 of 5. Here, that would have been really, really easy if we knew the function f minus 1. But since we cannot know, we don't know the theory that would enable that to happen, we have to use that property. So we can begin by assuming, let us assume that f minus 1 of 5 is equal to 5, is equal to n, sorry. Based on this property, we can flip them and switch to f. So if f minus 1 of 5 is equal to m, then that would mean that f of m is equal to 5, which means that 2m plus 5 is equal to 5, which further means that 2m is equal to 0, hence m is equal to 0. And how did we define m? We defined it as f minus 1 of 5. So we managed to find the needed value. It is more often to see the exact way of exercise through a table. Here, we are given a table of x and f of x values, meaning x and y values. We can see that 0 is related to 2, 3 to 5, 1 to 4, and 5 to 9. And we need to find f of 5 and f minus 1 of 5. The f of 5 part is the easy one. f of 5 means find the y value when x is 5. From the table, we can clearly see that when x is 5, y, which is the f of x, is equal to 9. So f of 5 is 9. But what about the f of minus 1 of 5? This suggests knowing the inverse function, which we don't. We will once again use that property. Assuming that f of minus 1 of 5 is equal to, let's say, m, that would mean f of m equals 5. And how can we interpret that? This would also mean that when y is 5, what is the value of x? We can then use the table. We can see that when y is 5, the corresponding x value is 3. So f minus 1 of 5 is equal to 3. Finally, the second thing that you should remember is the following. The domain of a function f is equal to the range of the inverse function f minus 1 and vice versa. The range of f is equal to the domain of the inverse. And that would be all. I hope I helped. But if you face any difficulty on what you just saw, you are always free and welcome to leave your comment below the video. As always, thank you for your help.